I got very interested in, in research. And sometimes I would spend much more time than necessary just because he was so interesting. Um, the bibliography for this film has something about 160 entries, books and, and articles, most of them written at the time, but some of them historically written now about the period, both about the World West and the Ottoman Empire. Um, and, but I've, you know, been interested in it in that it is part of um, how we tell history and how we tell stories. And, and the film is about the nature of storytelling. Originally, the, um, I mean, one of the, the ideas that, that were there at the beginning was trying to deal with myths that I grew up with, that we all grow up with. In this particular case, the myth of the cowboys and Indians, the Wild West, and the myth of the um, uh, final years of the Ottoman Empire and then the nation states that came out of that in the Balkans. And those two, in my mind, were so different, so separate, so had nothing to do with each other. And then as you start thinking about it, and as you start working on it, you realize that they, they have a lot in common. Um, first of all, they did happen at the exact same time. And so it was interesting then, then sort of trying to deconstruct those myths. I tried to do all of the story work uh, on paper, but then I believe that the director is ultimately a writer just using different tools. Um, the director tells a story. You know, it's all fine about beautiful images and music and pacing and everything, but I think they all they, they all serve a purpose in telling a particular kind of story and a particular kind of feeling. The feeling is what matters. The story is the skeleton. And the feeling that's between the lines is why we like a film or dislike a film. Um, so, as far as the hardcore storytelling, I try to finish it on paper and a little bit in rehearsal and while storyboarding. But you can never lock the story on paper 100%. And you probably shouldn't because then the film is going to feel stiff and, and, and boring. So things come out when you're shooting. But I don't, you know, as, as a rule, I try not to improvise. I try not to get a lot of things to enter the film on the set. Rather, the set is an ex is execution of what I had in mind before. Well, as far as violence in cinema, I like what Bergman says. He says, you know, um, ritualizing, not glorifying, ritualizing violence in cinema is a perfectly legitimate way for a society to deal with it. Um, personally, for me, I'm, I'm I'm scared and disgusted by violence, so I think it should be should be disgusting the way it's, it's portrayed in the arts. Um, as far as the westerns, I grew up on spaghetti westerns mm -hmm. and on John Wayne, which was always sort of more fun as a concept than when you watch it when you're 10 years old. There's like just a lot of nothing in between the fight scenes when you're 10 year old. Um, and I was looking at the searchers recently, and it was interesting, I think, at the beginning, the first thing it, it, <coughs> that comes up on, on the screen says Texas 1865, that fades out, and then Monument Valley fades in, which is not in Texas at all, but who cares? That was, his, I guess, his, his take on accuracy. Um, Sam Peckinpah is probably my, my favorite uh, director who has dealt with with the West um, because he sort of covers both extremes. Um, he, his films, particularly The Wild Bunch, can be very violent, can be brutal, but then on the other hand he feels there's, there's this warmth about the West and the people and the style, the lifestyle, um, that's really obvious and palpable to me and, and I can really relate to that. Um, just as, as, as a personal game, um, I, I do quote uh, 
some of his films at different points. I mean, there's actually in Before the Rain, there's, uh, there's uh, a quote where children play, instead of uh, Scorpio and ants, they play with a turtle. I treat the storyboard as a starting point. Um, and I like and, and I, I advise that to my students to use the storyboarding period as a way when they're alone with the script, with the material, and a way to to get to understand it even better. Even if, if you're the writer, this is looking at it from a different perspective and seeing how do I visualize it, how do I pace it, what needs to be changed. Um, so actually doing the little drawings is, is just an excuse for spending time with your material. Um, having said that, by the end of the day, I do have about a thousand drawings for, for each film. Um, a lot of them are uh, actually pretty basic setups, angle, reverse angle, uh, but then hopefully the frame itself is, is rich enough and the way they're paced and the cutaways will make it uh, a little richer. Um, then in addition to that, other things develop, particularly in, in dust and in the, in the battle scenes when we shot sometimes with two or three cameras. Um, there was a second unit and um, there was a second unit director who would get specific instructions on what to shoot, but sometimes they would pick up a little more, or I would go out and pick up more. So that was deviating from, from, the, from the storyboard. And then in the editing, you sort of chuck everything out and start from scratch because it's one thing what you wanted to do, but then it's something else what you actually got. Right. And what you got could be worse or it could be better. The fact that it's not what you wanted doesn't mean you screwed up, it could be better. Um, and then we try to find the, the, the life in what is there. And sometimes the focus shifts. Um, the editor I worked with on this film, it was the, the second time we worked together, he also got before the rain. Um, and we, um, so we had developed a relationship by then. Um, the big shootouts, the battle scenes, that's, um, I think he was more interested in the storytelling and in all of that than the big kinetic moments. I was more interested in the kinetic moments. So I would like to sit down and say, okay, how do we make this really fly? You know, don't, don't rely on the dialogue, try to deliver the emotion and the story without. Uh, without words, without dialogue, and it teaches you to work very fast. Because a lot of them are done in one day, so it's like one 20 hour shooting day. And you cram everything. Um, as far as the, the languages, the different languages in, in, uh, in my films, it's, it never comes from the production requirements, from the financing requirements. Those are the, uh, that's the way I saw the films. Like in Before the Rain, I was interested in, in fracturing it, not so much, not as much as dust and, and not jumping back and forth in time, but different places that are so, so different, so contrasted. And I felt Macedonian countryside, city of London, you can't get more different than that. And in this one, then it, it, was, uh, it was New York. Um, and I like how different languages and different cultures can uh, clash and still understand each other. In Before the Rain there was a, a, like one scene that's never subtitled on purpose. Um, here Luke doesn't understand what the Major is telling him, um, what other people are saying, but that's part of real life, which, you know, this content people don't always always feel. So uh, I, I just found it an interesting thing to deal with.